the carrots have grown to be um, just about the nice size I like to can them at. I don't like to can them when they get too big because they can get a little tough and woody. So today I went out and I just started um, pulling out some carrots to um, can. And um, we plant three different varieties, so we kind of try to mix them up. And um, it gives us a real, most of them are a real sweet carrot. And uh, there you see, every once in a while, you get a weird one in there. There's one of the white carrots mixed in. But um, for the most part, um, the carrots did good this year. Um, I mean, it will grow bigger as the season goes on, but we like to can them at about this size. Now here's some more that I picked up from another box that I had up by the house. So these are uh, basically all ready to go. Got the wheelbarrow half full of them. And um, next thing you do is um, take them up by my house and I'm going to uh, use a bucket and hose and I'll wash them all off to get the dirt off them. Pull all the green stems off the top of them. Then take them inside and basically start peeling them all. Now, this does take the um, longest amount of time, but it, it actually goes pretty quick. And it makes the house smell real good while you're at it. Um, those fresh carrots just have a really great smell when you start peeling them. Uh, if you watch the bean canning video, you'll see that most of this is pretty much identical except for the processing time. So just um, it may bore you a little bit. So here, after I get them all peeled up, uh, then I just take and... You know, rinse them a little bit to get any little bit of dirt or anything that's left on them off. Then I get out the mandolin. I set that for a quarter inch and I put on the serrated blade and uh, just slice them all. Now you can see I'm using the back side of a wooden spoon to push them through. I find that works best to keep them from uh, splitting up as they're coming out and keep the slices nice and even. Um, you know, you may want to try something else, but uh, that works best for me. And there you see they're basically all sliced up and ready to go in the jars. So the next thing we do is we get the canner ready, drop that rack in the bottom of it, and I add the first quart of water, and I just dump that into the bottom of the canner. Then um, after washing and carefully inspecting the jars, I place the first row of jars down in the bottom of the canner. Now you can... Um, do 18 of these pint jars at a time. And here you see I take another quart of water, that second quart, and I just kind of divide it evenly between the jars so when they heat up, it'll help steam them and um, sterilize them. Then the two tablespoons full of vinegar goes in the bottom of the pot, and that helps keep uh, the jars nice and shiny and keeps any minerals from building up on them. Then you put in the second rack and go through and fill the... Um, that layer up with another nine jars. Now we try to be careful and not bang them together and whatnot, but you can get damages. I'll show you later. And then here it is, the uh, third quart, final quart of water going in. Um, and then uh, just set the top on loosely. And I go out in my garage where I have a couple stoves set up and I have a pot there full of water for the boiling water that'll go in them. And then I just um, leave the top loosely on the canner and I steam the jars for, till they steam for about 10 minutes. And then carefully remove the top so you don't get burned. And drain the jars out and get ready to start filling them. Now when you take the jars out, they're pretty hot and they're, you know, they're all sterilized. So you want to be careful you don't get burned. And I always put them on a wooden cutting board that um, doesn't give them any kind of thermal shock or anything. So once I get the first layer of jars out, I just go back through and I start filling it up with the uh, pre-sliced carrots. And you find out that if you just put some in and then you shake them a little and put some in, you can pack them down pretty good. Then once all the jars are filled up, I like to put a half a teaspoon of salt in each jar. You can eliminate this step if you don't like the salt or don't want it, but we find find that it makes them taste a little better. Then you go back and you have that pot of water that's boiling uh, real good. And I fill the jars up uh, to maybe about an inch and a half from the top. I leave a little bit of room. On these, you need a one inch head space when you can them. And I like to just leave them down a little bit. So once they're, um, you know, I've done the first filling, I'm going to go back through and try to remove the air that's trapped in them. And there you can see there's that little canning helper tool. And you just 
poke that down into the uh, jars and try to move things around to get any air bubbles that may be trapped in there. Then you go back, you set the head space, and it, each one of the little notches is a quarter inch. So with the one inch head space required, I just uh, set it on the top notch and fill the jar up until the moisture is just touching the bottom of that. Then I just take a piece of paper towel to be safe, and I just wipe the, um, the top rim of each jar to make sure nothing has stuck on there. And in the meantime, you have a, um, a pot with the lids heating up on it. Just, you, just bring them up below a boil and just let them like simmer for a little while. And that helps soften the uh, seals and sterilize them while you're at it. So you just, uh, one of these little magnetic helpers uh, really is a handy thing to have to, you know, get the lids on without getting your fingers burned or anything. So um, basically you set the lids on and just go back and I just start all the rings at once and just try to, you know, get them screwed down just finger tight if I can. And then once I have them all on there, I'll just go back and I'll just um, snug them up to uh, the point where they need to be to go in the canner. Now it's time to start doing the second layer. So I just take that, uh, that little divider shelf plate out. And same thing here. You take the... Um, just take the bottle and dump them out and put them on the wooden cutting board and then just carefully set the, uh, the nine full jars that you did in the bottom of the canner and then just put the um, that shelf back in it and I'll set the top on here loosely you don't want to lock it on yet and then just go back and repeat all the steps with the next nine jars and that will give you the, um, the second layer so that's why it's really handy to get a little bit deeper can or so you can, um, you know, it can run 18 of these pint jars at once in the canner, which really can make things go fast. So once these uh, jars are all all filled up like the first ones and just set them back in the, um, the top layer of the canner and uh, try to do it carefully and try not to, to bang them together too much or anything because they will get damaged easily. Now, everything that you're dealing with here is um, extremely hot, and there's also a lot of hot steam coming out of the pot at the same time. So you want to be real careful and um, make sure that you don't burn yourself in this process. And once you get it all loaded up, just put the top on. This time, line up the uh, arrows on it and lock it together and start to watch that little vent. That vent after, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes will start steaming. And what you want to do is you want to let it steam for 10 minutes and then drop that weighted um, pressure valve on it. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the pressure to come up. And when you're running the 18 pints at one time, it does take uh, quite a while for the pressure to build. Then you'll see it'll get up to about 10, 10 PSI and um, pretty soon that little, uh, there you see it, that little um, weighted pressure control valve starts rocking on its own there and then when it hits right about 11 psi it'll be rocking pretty good and then it's time to just start the timer now for these pints of carrots it's 25 minute process time so i started the timer when that uh, hit the 11 psi and now it's just a matter of uh, waiting and uh, you know keeping it at the proper pressure so you can adjust the flame and cut it back to uh, keep the pressure right then once your timer counts down um, turn off the heat and what I did is I walked away from this for about an hour and a half this time because I mean this load does have a lot of heat in it and you'll see that that top there just um, it stops rocking and um, about an hour and a half later I came back carefully removed the lid always spin it away from you so you don't get the steam in your face and then it's a matter of just uh, picking all the jars out and putting them on some wooden racks to finish cooling. As you can see, you know, canning carrots really is a really easy process. And just get a ball blue book and follow all the times and pressures for your elevations. Um, now, I did have one problem with this batch. I noticed as I was taking the jars out that... There was one jar that was a little bit low on fluid on the actual water that was in it. And there was a real strong smell of uh, carrots cooking in the pot. 
And um, upon looking over the jars, um, most of them came out really perfect. But I noticed uh, if you look at like that one jar back in the middle there, you see that it's down about maybe two inches on the, um, the water level. Um, here, here they are. They're all cleaned up. You take them, you remove the rings, and you wash them and uh, label them, and then they'll go down in the root cellar, and uh, they'll be good for a couple of years. But here's that one jar that was uh, low. And if you look carefully at it, you'll see that the jar actually did um, crack all the way around the bottom. Even though I had inspected it carefully, um, it's still, and I didn't see anything to start with, it still developed a crack, and uh, so we had to toss that one out. Uh, jars are about 10 years old, so you never know that this could happen at any time. I was really surprised that the whole bottom didn't blow off that jar, but for some reason the vacuum actually sealed on it when it was done. Oh, well, you can't win them all. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.